Thanks, Randy, but very brief. He's a reluctant hero. Uh, 91 uh, didn't play till round six, kicked 127 goals. And uh, it's amazing because there's a young fella from North Ballarat and 16 years is too long to come back to this great club. So he's humble. He doesn't like talking about himself. He is the Don Bradman of our game. I'm sorry to get emotional, but I've lost it. Thank you. Well, here we are, take two. Tony Lockett, the great man, has just, as we all know, been inducted as a legend in the AFL Hall of Fame, which is a magnificent honour for the big fella. And as we all know, when he's inducted as a legend of the St Kilda Hall of Fame, yours truly got up and blubbered like a big baby and got two lines in to this speech. So here we go, take two. Tony's the Don Bradman of the AFL. Like the Don, his record will never be surpassed. He kicked 1,360 goals, nearly 900 for the mighty Saints. He kicked bags of seven or more on 74 occasions. That's right. Ten, or more, uh, ten goals or more on 22 occasions. My, how time flies. Plugger's also the best kick of all time. It was a shame he never kicked the ball to himself, as he was a superb pass. His accuracy goes at the top of the tree also at 70%. It's amazing when you think he played at Windy Hill, Whitten Oval, Arden Street, Waverley Park and the rain soaked turf at Moorabbin. There was no Etihad Stadium under the roof in those days. Who could forget when Plugger kicked his maiden ton in 87 and won the Brown on the same year, still the only full forward to do so with the delivery best described as shoddy. Plugger was a team player, best illustrated in 89 when leading up to the State of Origin clash. All the talk was could Lockett and Dunstall play in the same goal square. The critics said no, as years earlier, Taylor and Roach at Tigerland did not work, hence Taylor headed to Collingwood. In the pre-game meeting at Jollymont House, the team was still unsure whether the stars would line up together, when the great EJ stood up and said, Plugger has something to say. Tony stood up and said, Dunstall's full forward and I'm playing in the pocket. Silence was deafening, you could have heard a pin drop. As the players, we walked over to the G that day, the Vicks went on to win by a record 89 points, Lockett and Dunstall kicking nine goals between them. In 91, Big Tone did not play till round seven due to injury. Three games in, he had 34 goals on the board. The Saints started to give the supply deserved through Winmar, Harvey, McAdam, etc. Not only did he win his second Coleman medal with 127 goals in 17 games, he kicked five bags of 10 or more, and if he played all 23, he would have kicked 175. He kicked the Saints into the finals for the first time in 18 years, his first final, he netted a lazy nine goals five. After 132 goals the following year, he then started to get a few injuries and only a few people realised the pressure he was under to perform. He would dry reach in the toilets before every game because he knew the reason why the Saints won was the same reason why we lost. Too much rested on his burly shoulders and they could only take so much. People and critics often say he should give something back to football. He single-handedly kept the Saints afloat through the 80s which were a lot of the times winless, but he gave supporters hope, much like Farlap did in the Depression. He's a big part of the reason why we're here today. I'll leave with Plugger's ability to perform when it mattered most. It was in the 95 State of Origin match versus South Australia, where the great late EJ did his famous lap of honour with his son. Plugger asked EJ in the rooms how he's going, and EJ remarked, don't worry about me, how are you going? And Tony whispered, I'll do it for you, champ. In the bowels of the MCG, EJ was in the rooms after the famous lap and asked me, as I was his chaperone that day, how the mighty Vicks were going. And I kept coming back saying that a forward line filled with stars such as Lowe, Lyon, Harvey, Ablett and Lockett out of the square were always going to win. EJ then asked who was playing well and I said, it was amazing EJ. Ablett and Lockett would keep leading but the ball kept hitting the burly number four on his ample chest. Lockett kicked seven and went on to win the EJ Witten medal that day. EJ whispered in my ear as he left, I can die a happy man now, because I always wanted to know who the better player out of Ablett and Lockett was. Saints fans knew long before that Anthony Howard Pluggett Lockett was not a superstar, but a superhero. Cheers. <laughs>